Just recently, I signed with London Tone Music, which is affiliated with London Bridge Studios up in Seattle. I'm gonna be working with a historic studio with a historic producer, and uh, I'm gonna see what happens with my music. I played sports until I was about seven, and I just did not like it at all, and I wasn't good at them. My mom suggested, well, why don't you try music? It's kind of the next logical thing to do after sports. So I said, okay, and then, uh, you know, she suggested I try guitar, and uh, I started taking lessons, and it just kind of took off from there. first time on stage, I performed Folsom Prison Blues with a friend of the family's band. And I felt what it was like to be on stage and I was like, this is, this is what I want to do. My style of music I would say is probably a mix between rock, pop, funk, and blues. I kind of write what I feel and uh, I don't really like to put necessarily a, a category on it because I like to, I'm still young, I got you know, things to experiment with. So. Performing is above anything is my favorite thing to do. It's my it's my passion, and when I'm up there, I, I just focus on bringing the fire, you know. And uh, it's people love it. I just want to play in front of as many people as I can. I want my music to be heard, and impact as many people's lives as I, you know, I can. If I could play with anybody, it'd be Paul McCartney. If I grew up on stage and play yesterday with Paul McCartney, that's like my all-time dream. Well, my mom played a guitar, a little bit. My dad played piano. My grandma played piano, a great sight reader. My grandpa was an accomplished violinist. So there was music always around the house. Finally, they got me a, a guitar for Christmas. It had strings so high up on the neck, it was almost impossible to play. <laughs> but I managed, and my dad paid for lessons. I took a date, Cheryl Albert, up to the CPS field house, and Chuck Berry opened the show. And then my hair just stood on end. I said, yes, now we got the idea. Now it makes sense. So I went home and you couldn't get the guitar out of my hand ever since. <laughs> the Sonics lived right across the alley from me, uh, Rob Lind. We'd both take a break and go out in the alley. And I'd say, yeah, I'm gonna have records out, you know, one of these days. And Rob would say, yeah, well, so am I. And to this day, we do. <laughs> which is pretty good. <laughs> right after high school, which I didn't quite finish at Wilson, I went down to Texas and played with Bobby Fuller. I fought the law and the law won. But I didn't stay there for very long. They were so clean and I was so funky. You know, and uh, I wanted to come back here and play the blues with my friends. You know, downtown Broadway was the, the place. Back with the Frantics playing over here for Joe Carbone at the uh, Hi-Hat. We decided the uh, Frantics was gonna go down there and play in San Francisco. We went down there, we got the job at the Dragon of Go-Go in San Francisco in Chinatown. 
and we were doing 10 sets a night, everybody else's songs, none of our own, we weren't writing. Then we went and had a peek at the Longshoremen's Hall and the Avalon and the Fillmore to see what's going on. And they had the Grateful Dead and the Jefferson Airplane, Stop with Camel. And we said, hey, wait a minute, maybe we can get into this level. We decided we're just gonna have to break up to reform. So we broke up, got rid of those stupid suits and uh, started hanging out with those guys. And then Bob went down to LA and uh, he bumped into Peter Lewis. And uh, then another band began to start happening, which was Moby Grape. So they called me and Don up who were living together in San Carlos and asked if we would be into playing with them. She said, oh, sure, yeah, we love you guys. And we played together and it was like magic. Just, it was like nothing I'd ever been exposed to before. And I remember on the way home, me and Don were just laughing and saying, now we got something. This really makes sense, because everybody wrote, everybody sang, and everybody played. And we all got along real good. And, uh, I mean, it was just a wonderful situation. It was nice to finally get onto that level, you know, of the Fillmore and the Avalon and Winterland. Number 16 on here is the one I like. See if I can find it. Nolan! <laughs> What's up? Tell me, what do you like to play? Uh, it's strange because yeah. there's things I like to write, yeah. and there's things I like to play. Yeah. And they're, and they're kind of two different things. Yeah. I'm a big fan, I like writing slower songs. Yeah. Like more slow on the acoustic. Yeah. But um, as far as playing live, I just like playing just like, you Let know. Let have it. Yeah, raw, yeah, rock and I roll. I noticed that you know. about you. you yeah. Know, you get down. So. You do pretty good there, pal. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. It all just kind of depends. Yeah. What about your influences? Well, I mean, my favorite guitar player, uh, one of his biggest influences on me was Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. I heard yeah. the live at the Fillmore. Yeah. Uh, the power to soul. Oh, sure. And just, you know, they have that bump, yeah. down, out, and then it comes with the yeah. down, out, and then, uh, that yeah. I was kind of opened my eyes. So he's a good influence, and uh, I yeah. loved it. He he picked up on, uh, you know, and innovated so much. Oh yeah, and just his know. his performance. Because I'm a big yeah. I'm a big fan of performance, yeah. and uh, I like putting on a show. And yeah, you know, he just did it, and he I, he didn't do it. I don't think because 
He just did it because that's what he felt. Yeah. Didn't because he felt like he had to do it or it was a gimmick or something. Just because that's what he did. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He felt it. I also, I'm a big fan of the. Uh, I like Paul McCartney and the Beatles. Yeah. Yeah. So the writing was just unbelievable. The writing was great. Yeah. I had to play one time in front of Ringo and George. Wow. About froze. You know, <laughs> sitting out there looking at those guys. Right. And we come in here. Do you, you play here once in a while, huh? Yeah. Yeah. This is where I first uh, had my first live performance. Yeah. Well, well no, this was. Is that on a Wednesday? Is when they have the. Yeah. This, this is where I. Well, this is where I first started performing at when yeah. I was starting to get into. I yeah. came here to so I went and actually, yeah. first time I ever saw like live music, I came here yeah. saw the Randy Oxford band. Oh yeah. And you know Raphael Trenkel. Oh yeah. 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 I saw him playing guitar. I was like, whoa. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of you know being able to jam with him and stuff. That's yeah. been pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Want to play just a hero stormy Monday? Yeah. Okay. KG? Sure. You get a little volume. Okay. got the 90s grunge scene, I mean, back in the old days yeah. with the rock and roll, Jimi yeah. Hendrix, I mean, it's all oh, yeah. been a little more edgy uh -huh. and yeah, a little and more rock and roll. A lot more else. instrumental, yeah. I thought, rather than uh, vocalists. Matter of fact, in the old days, a vocalist was almost kind of considered a sissy. You know? <laughs> if, you, if you sang, oh no, you're singing, oh no. If how about you, what got you into the blues? Well, Jimmy? <laughs> no, I, it was from, I, I don't really consider myself a, a blues artist. Uh -huh. I mean, I think my guitar playing uh -huh. just has some blues influence uh -huh. in there. But just from playing the blues was going to the jams and stuff. Yeah. Just because that's what yeah. you play at the jams, yeah. you just play the blues. That's so, right. I, I mean, I started playing, like, yeah. first song I ever learned was Folsom Prison. Oh, yeah. Uh, Johnny Cash. That and then cool. I started learning a lot of, like, classic rock stuff. But yeah. then came to the jams and yeah. did blues. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, we don't know the charts. Exactly. And we get there, so the three chords comes in mighty handy. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a song called Love You So Much, which is the same blues changes, but it's the G, C, and D yeah. in a row. Mm -hmm. Love you so much, just about to drive me crazy. So we could do that instead of the standard. Right. So I, I made it 
up like that just just so I could tell somebody that quick. Mm -hmm. For me, uh, when I'm writing songs and mm -hmm. stuff, I think that I try to keep blues as a as an underlying base yeah, of sure. my music, yeah. but then I try to build on top of that. That's what um, I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. So like, I have a song. Yeah. I mean, I have mm -hmm. a couple songs that are a little more bluesy. Yeah. Um, but like, I just wrote a song called uh, "Step Back," uh -huh. and it's um. Broken son, last moments of his life are spent looking down the barrel of a gun. He's just another number, no chance of being someone. I think it's time we step back and see what we become. Yeah. And then yeah, there's another verse, but then it goes to the chorus and it's gonna go to the four. This thing goes. back and look ahead there are so many things it must be said I wish that someone would just hold up a mirror then we might see ourselves and make it clear step back go you know, back to the thing So anyway, so yeah, that's, that's, you know, I try to, I try yeah. to find that nice balance. Same so. thing, yeah. Yeah. I just love you so much. It's, uh, people can play with it mm -hmm. and hear it, and uh, no modulations. No, no, there is. Yeah. We we did put a uh, yeah. key chain, uh, timing change. We yeah. go from yeah. the four four, then we throw like a Beatles six eight in the oh, middle. Oh yeah. So it goes from we go. Yeah. Step oh, back. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. I like those things. Like a roller coaster ride. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Instead of going straight down the freeway, you got a few. Uh, mm -hmm. Moby Grape used to do that too. Yeah. With uh, ain't no use mm -hmm. and just change the time changes. Right. Did that in, in uh, quite a few tunes, just trying to come up with something that's, that's not, there's nothing straight about Moby Grape really. Yeah. <laughs> it's all kind of. But uh, it takes a lot of rehearsal when when you're modulating and change time changes and stuff. No, it does. I mean, it's, yeah. it takes a lot of rehearsal, anyways. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. You know, if you're, you're going to do anything, yeah. Yeah, exactly. If you're just going to play the blues, yeah. This guy, a friend of mine, Benny Rowe, he got the gig with uh, John Lee Hooker, mm -hmm. and he says, "John Lee, when do we rehearse?" John Lee says, "Rehearse." He says, "You got ears, don't you?" <laughs> but, you know, you ought to know John Lee's. What he does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, this is one big pleasure sitting here with you. Likewise. Yeah, this thank you. It was a lot you. of fun. Yeah, yeah thank you.